Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce to you our very first speaker for the morning, Noel Arantilla. Welcome home. And uh, in addition, I guess, uh, uh, recognize or appreciated by Carta Institute of Colorado UCS uh, Certified Financial Institute. And uh, we are tasked to share with you a very, very interesting uh, topic, favorite uh, and safe. And how can you be your investment to pay in this? Uh, globalized fraudulent market, how can you be certain in this uh, uncertain time? I, I, of course the answer is yes. So this is synonymous, safer than safe is synonymous to our financial strategy we, we build or building a solid financial foundation. Okay, I forgot to. Okay. Um, if you just you invest at the same time protect your investment of course uh, it can be safe so you can invest and manage your money successfully so we have a book as our guidance to how to do it building a solid financial foundation this is saving your future basic principles in building a financial foundation so of course for the past so many years uh, we've been doing this very successfully so i think uh, this is also an opportunity to share with you the financial strategy or approach how we do it in in ing international marketing group so meaning you have an investment investment is of course to achieve your financial goal but you need to protect your investment with emergency funds you know uh, stock market fluctuates so what if uh, market is down and there's emergency so your investment becomes your emergency fund you'll be losing a lot of money and you have to pay off your debt just most of the time debt interest rate is higher than your investment that will make your investment less. Your and life insurance to protect your family health care fund is also to protect your investment but before discussing that let me uh, share to you first now uh, that we need to realize we need to understand that we need to know how to control our future so your future sorry your future will not be in the hands of your employer or not be in the hands of your union your government your relatives nor will it be in the hands of your bank or the broker actually it's in your hands and the good news is you can do it and uh, first and foremost you have to invest in yourself be your own money manager but that's what you do in ing you help every individual member become their own money manager understand how money works and of course you have to understand also know how to make money work for you so two things how money works you cannot make money work for you if you don't understand you don't know how money works money is your own economy so Sorry. Have to skip this. Uh, our time is uh, compressed, so we, I have to skip some slides. So, IMG is a new concept. Sorry. In financial industry, that assists people who want to help themselves in building their, their financial foundation. And. Um, we are one of the biggest and fastest growing financial services companies in, 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 the, in the Philippines and uh, our operation is global from Europe to Middle East, Asia, all over the Philippines, US and Canada. We are a financial brokerage company actually. And um, sorry. <laughs> our mission is to help every family achieve financial freedom and no family left behind. It is a good enough at the same time. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, we are a one stop shop financial solution company. Uh, we make financial products understandable to people at the same time. We help people become their own money managers. 
You know, financial products are the most important products people need to own. Can you imagine people retiring without health care or retiring without investment or a, 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 a breadwinner dies without life insurance? So it's the most important product people need to own, but these are invisible products, products you cannot see. So people would realize this only when there is there, when you need it. But these financial products, you cannot buy them when you need them. You can buy only these financial products while you don't need them. That is why we make these financial products understandable to people. So aside from becoming these financial products understandable to people, we make also these financial products accessible to people. So we partner with a lot of companies from healthcare to life insurance to investments, especially mutual funds to real estate, non-life, property and casualty, and uh, of course uh, for, for, I don't know, for, for estate planning or estate preservation. So we have strategic alliance with that company. So thousands of Filipinos have benefited from IMG's platform to get educated on all aspects of their personal finance and have access to hundreds of financial products and services. Training and support to manage the money, save on various products and services, and make money in, in these products, earn and learn in financial industry, and very important is to build a solid financial foundation. So we, we have uh, several financial concepts to make these financial products understandable to people. First, uh, this is, uh, we need to understand the relationship of wealth and responsibility. So these two lines will meet each other in the form of X. So responsibility, the reason why we work for the money. The bigger the responsibility, the harder we need to work for the money. That is why over time, as we grow older, our responsibility must go down. And the other line, this line should go up. Wealth line. So our investment line. As we grow older, our wealth need to go up. So wealth need to go up and responsibility need to go down, not the other way around. So we must take care of our responsibilities while building wealth because there's only two things that will happen to us. So first, so we call this uh, two problems, potential problems on life. in life. We might live too long. And the other potential thing that can happen to us, we might die too soon. So what kind of problem you want? Live too long or die too soon? Live too long na lang. <laughs> In case you live too long, do you have a problem? Problem, right now, people live longer today. Mahaba pang buhay mo, ubos na ang pera mo. Solution in case you live too long is investment. In case you die too soon, do you have a problem? May problema ba? Wala, wala na tayo eh. Ang problema, ni yung may iwan. So, solution in case we die too soon is insurance. So, two main components in financial planning, investment, and insurance. So, first thing in financial planning, you need to know how much investment and how much insurance is enough. So, general formula, your annual income times 10. If you know how to get interest rate of 10% per year, you get times 10 as a multiplier. So, as your investment. For example, your annual income is 300,000 pesos per year, times 10, your responsibility is 3 million. That's your insurance and investment need. The concept is 10% of 3 million is 300,000 pesos per year. So, the interest of your money replaces your income. What if you can get only 5% interest rate per year. The multiply is not anymore times 10. It's times 20. So 300,000 times 20, 6 million, 5%. So the, 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 it's uh, 300,000 pesos per year. So responsibility decreases, decreases as, as wealth increases. So the best way to bring down your responsibility is to increase your savings. So for example, your responsibility is 3 million, your savings is zero, so your responsibility stays at 3 million. You increase your savings to 1 million, your responsibility will go down to 2 million. As you increase your savings, for example, 2 million, your responsibility will go down to 1 million. 
and you increase your savings to 3 million, your responsibility will be zero. So how, what's your insurance need? How much insurance enough? So me, if, you're, if you have responsibility of 3 million, zero savings, you need to buy 3 million insurance. And you, have, you increase your savings to 1 million, you need to buy 2 million insurance. So it depends on how much is your responsibility. And you have uh, 2 million savings, your responsibility is only 1 million, buy 1 million insurance. And you have 3 million savings, no need to buy life insurance. So another example, to me, less wealth, more responsibility, more insurance. More wealth, less responsibility, less insurance. So another, another analogy or, or relationship with the two, your insurance and investment is your kids' education. For example, you, to, to, to ensure college education of your one child, you need one million. And you're, you have zero savings for your kids' education, you need to buy one million insurance for your, your child. So with, with, with or your, without you, your child will be to college. And you have savings for your kids' education, 300,000, so you need to buy insurance of 700,000. But you have savings of 700,000, you need to buy 300,000 insurance. And you have savings of 1 million, no need to buy life insurance. So meaning that cost for insurance, you can add to your investment. So you increase your wealth line faster. So when, again, when you have enough savings, you need to buy life insurance. So that's the analogy of the X-curve concept. So, so when you have a, a lot of responsibilities, like for example, you work, your income is 300,000. That income is for the needs of your family, for food, for kids education, housing loan, for your health care, and for the debt payments and other liabilities and responsibilities. When you have a lot of savings, so meaning you can have uh, money working for you. For example, the 3 million 10% of 3 million is 300,000. The interest of your money can provide for your needs, for your food, and we expect your housing loan is already fully paid, and your children are working, and uh, you have your long term health care, and you're debt free. Then that's the time you ca can call yourself your financially free. So that's financial freedom. And uh, we need to protect our future. What if your assets and family are not protected? Who will take care of your young children in case you die too soon? And who will take care of yourself in case you live too long? Who decides for your health care or end of life decision? Who gets your home? Who inherits all your bank accounts? Can you avoid family arguments over your belongings and keep safe? Who will operate and own your, own your business? Do you have a will? So meaning, we have, when you do financial planning or investment, it should be complete. So the, the three wealth solutions, complete wealth solutions we do, of course, it, number one is wealth building, but we've been saying we need to protect your wealth, how to protect your wealth or your investment with life insurance and also with health insurance and property insurance, emergency fund, debt management, and very important in wealth building is the number three, wealth preservation and transfer. So a lot of Filipinos now has really big problem on number three, how to distribute their estate to their children. So we need to address that also, so estate planning and distribution. So the law of building wealth, the line going up will be discussed by Joanne later on, I'll be discussing the law of decreasing responsibility or wealth protection. So that's about life insurance again, and also uh, health care, property and casualty insurance or property insurance, emergency fund, debt management, estate preservation, taking care of your responsibilities while building your wealth. 
ito. The X curve, as you observe, provides a clear approach of building a financial foundation. Building your financial foundation. It should be a solid financial foundation. So, uh, let's go back to the foundation. Like building a house, you must build it from ground going up. And we need a good array of financial products and services to build a solid financial foundation. So investment alone is not enough. Again, you need to protect your investment while building wealth. So I'll discuss to you the, the, the four, the healthcare, life insurance, fee of your debt, emergency funds. Then later on, Joanne will discuss the, 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 the investment side. So first, healthcare. Without healthcare, with one major illness, you may lose all your investment. So as we observe, no, most of the time, medyo nasa hospital mo na, medyo you spend a lot of money before mawala sa mundong to, you spend a lot of money, so obos lahat ng investment. So you need to protect your investment with healthcare. And also, not just short-term healthcare, we need also to provide, protect our investment with long-term healthcare. So why we need to buy long-term healthcare? Because you cannot bring with you the healthcare benefits provided by your company when you retire or when you resign. And most sicknesses appear at old age. Kaya marami tayong na ano, na narinig, ano, bakit yung sakit ko hindi lumabas nung nasa kumpanya pa ako while I have healthcare benefits? Bakit lumabas nung labas na ako, wala na akong healthcare benefits? So that's the usual thing to happen. More than 99% of Filipinos didn't prepare for their long-term health care. And in the Philippines, hospitals cannot let you in without deposit. So pr to protect your investment, you have to have short-term and long-term health care. So for life insurance, your, again, protect your family against a loss of income in case you die too soon. What should come first? Investment or insurance? For example, you have extra 10,000 pesos. The first 10,000 pesos you can invest. So where you want to invest your money, you have small children. You put that 10,000 to your investment or insurance? You put that 10,000 to investment, you go out, your home, something will happen to you, your family, how much your family can get? 10,000 plus increase. You put that first 10,000 to investment, the 10,000 can give about 3 million to 6 million to your family. So actually, if you know how to buy life insurance, their insurance right now, if you're about 30, 35 years old, it's only about more than 3,000 pesos for every million. Death by accident is 3 million. So meaning your 10,000 natural death can give your family 3 million. Death by accident is global. It's about 6 million. So meaning insurance is a smarter investment. Insurance is instant money. Insurance is investment, not an expense. So what's the difference? By the way, how do you want to protect your family? Big money by buying life insurance or cell phone, car, house, gadgets, shoes, electronics. Anong gagawin ng mga anak mo dito? So meaning, protect your family first before buying all that thing. So protecting your family is more important than those things. What's the difference between insurance and lotto? Pag nanalaw ka ng luto, milyonaryo. Pag may naman tayo may million insurance, milyonaryo. But what's the difference between the two? In luto, you have very, very small chance to win. In insurance, your family is guaranteed to win. Kasi lahat tayo will be back to the Lord. So meaning, why don't die useless? A lot of people, they die useless. They die without life insurance. So we've been saying, why die useless? Why not make money out of your debt? So buy life insurance and be a hero to your family. Dads of life be uh, before age 65, 
So chance of dying, your age 25, 24.1%, age 60, so five years na lang, 93%. So that's the odds of dying. By the way, how about the odds of dying before age 99? So ilang tao nabubuhay up to age 100? Meaning, in life insurance, your family, they are guaranteed to you. So you save money by reducing costs in food, clothing, drinks. You can also big money in life insurance. So you need to know how to buy life insurance. So you need to understand bundled or unbundled insurance. Know how to buy life insurance. Know insurance for and price because the cost of insurance is always charged to you. To understand what is term insurance, to life endowment, UL, BUL, etc. Next thing is to pay off your debt again. If your debt is uh, interest rate is higher than your savings, your investment will become useless. So, debt is a termite if not eliminated it will be the foundation of your financial house. So I'll wrap up now. Just uh, uh, the next figure. So my time is up. You need to understand bad debt again, good debt. But uh, very important also is to. Uh, is to protect your investment with emergency fund. So without emergency fund, investment becomes emergency fund. So I'll wrap up another one minute. There's a lot of emergencies like uh, like loss of job, uh, business failure, business due down, catastrophe, uh, uh, and uh, major repair or replacement of your car, house. So meaning. You, you have to protect all, all that if uh, again without uh, without emergency funds your investment becomes emergency fund so don't tap your investment don't put and take without emergency fund talagang yun ang mangyari put and take so emergency fund will protect your investment again put and take do you have emergency funds yes i have six credit cards Charging your emergencies to death is not the answer. So charging your emergencies to death can create more serious problems. So even responsible people can get into the death trap even emer when emergency strikes and they have when they have no emergency fund. So in paying your paying up your debt, by the way, emergency fund is about three to six times of your monthly income. And uh, that too, no emergency fund and and debt uh, strategies to to pay off your debt, there's always strategies to pay off your debt. So talagang you have to, for example, in debt payment, dapat you hard work plus per year. Hindi pwede puro hard work, hindi rin pwede puro per year. Kasi I know a friend, no? my strategy is I just pray. So Lord, sana mawala na yung utang ko. So oh Lord, sana mawala na yung utang ko lang ginagawa. Then that prayer didn't work. I'll change strategy, I'll change my prayer. Lord, sana mawala na yung inutangan ko. So, talagang there's a, a strategy how to pay off your debt. Meron din ako isang kaibigan, uh, malaking utang. Yung, yung ano, sa Bombay, ano, malaking utang niya, ina-deport ang Bombay. Buti na lang, naging zero ang utang ko. So, again, there's a strategy how to pay off your debt. Now, let's go to the to the investment, no? To reach your our investment goal. But again, to wrap up, you have to protect your investment. So, taking care of your responsibility while doing well. So, sorry, I'm doing it fast. That, that uh, our time is an unknown short term because of, you know, topic. So, uh, thank you to all of you. I, I, I hope you learned something from that. Ladies and gentlemen, please a hand for Sir Noel. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Friends. Our second speaker for our talk this morning is a certified financial educator in the United States. He also is a registered financial planner. He is the president and chairman of the board of the International Marketing Group or IMG Insurance Brokers Corporation and has almost 20 years of financial management experience and completed courses and trainings in the US and Asian countries through World Financial Group, a company based in the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a hand to our second speaker, Joanne de las Peñas. Good morning. All right. I hope you learn a lot, but um, let's try to make it a little bit quick. Safer than the safe.
a lot of people would come here and they're looking at what's the best way, what's the best investment. Is that right? What's there? There's a lot of things that you'd like to invest. But what's really is the best investment there is that you can do? For me, the best investment, anybody have an idea? Kaya nga nandito kami, Joy. Financial education. You really have to learn, you know, the first thing you would want to be, you need a coach. Because whatever you learn here, that, that's not like the end of it all. You're going to continually er, uh, uh, learn. And the first thing you would learn is when I w talked to Brother Bo, was that it's very important to have your coach. And I realized that you need to appoint who's going to be your coach. Because every time there's things that happen, you need to know what's going on and you need help. Um, all great outlets, even, even if they're the greatest, they also have what? Coaches. So I hope that whatever I teach you today, you realize that it's not the end. And I'm here, you know, and there's a lot of people that would love to help you. A lot of people, all you really have to do is ask. Financial education is the most important thing. What's the secret of the wealthy? It has always been in my mind. What's the secret of the wealthy? How come I see a lot of wealthy people, they don't really work, but they still have a lot of money. Did you ever wonder? Yes? Same thing with me. How come I see you work pretty hard, and yet you struggle with money, and you see a lot of people, they're quite wealthy, yet they're not doing anything. They play golf. They eat a fine restaurant. What do they have that we don't have? Then I realized that they have more financial education than most of us. And then one of the things that I learned from them is they learn how to make money work for them. Instead of you work for the money, which we go to school, we go to colleges, to do what? To get a job. So that when we have a job, we can work for the money. But you know what? What we don't realize is that there's another side. We can let money work for us. If you know financial education, money can work for you. So what happened with money? Money become the employee. How many of you would like to have an employee that's money? You know, you know why you like it? Let me tell you why. It works 24-7, right? Money doesn't stop working. Works on holidays. And number three, the most important thing is money never... If you have an employee that never complains, would that be a perfect employee? And you never get sick. And it doesn't go on vacation. And it's very loyal. I realize that a lot of wealthy people, they're the boss, and they have a lot of employees that are money working for them. There's only one problem. The problem is it doesn't work. If you don't have any, tama ba yun? So how do we have, how do we make sure we have a lot of employees? So when people ask you, what do you do? I have a lot of money employees. So if money is the employee, you should be. Can you, can you talk to the person beside you? We should be the boss for money. We should not work for the money, but we should let money work for us. Don't let money control you. You control money. Ask me how. Can't hear you. Ask me how. You really want to know? Okay. You need to understand how money works. Because if you don't understand how money works, money will never work for you. A lot of people, they like money to work for them. But they never spend time to understand money, how, to, how money works. The mere fact you are here, 
This is one of the things you want to learn. You want to learn how to understand money work so that money can work for you. So, palakpakan yung lahat ng tao dito, right? Understanding how money works is about three things. You need to understand the wealth formula and then Noel talk to you about the X-curve and I will talk to you about the four cornerstone of the financial future. But the first thing I want to talk to you is there is a wealth formula. When you want to achieve something, there has to be a formula. It cannot be just, oh, I want to become wealthy. The first thing you need to seek is, ano bang yung formula ng becoming wealthy? The wealth formula is always remember this. You gotta learn money, but it's not enough. You have to understand time, the implication of time. And then you gotta understand rate of return. If you know this rate of return, it says plus or minus. Because market could go up and market can go down. And then you have a minus inflation. Because inflation is always minus. And then you minus taxes. And if something is left, kung may natitira pa, yun ang wealth. Pag wala nang natitira, so even if you have money right now, holding money right now, but when you minus inflation, rate of return, and taxes, and nothing is left, then that's not wealth. So first thing you want to understand is money. Remember always, if you want to understand money, all big money come from small money. So don't worry when, John, I don't have any money to invest because I only have small. Remember always, all wealthy people came from small money. You got to understand compound interest. It's very simple and I need to rush it. But most people, they always look at the bottom part. How much money will I make? But you forgot the rate of return. The rate of return is very important. If you look at 4% and 8%, the difference is double. But if you look at the bottom part, the income side, the income is not double. So when you double the interest, doesn't mean the income is double. In fact, the income is four times. If you look at 4% to 12%, 4 is multiplied by 3, triple. But the income is not triple. Below is 640,000 as against 40,000. So basically, the 640,000, what income does it mean? It means to say that it became 16 times more. So interest rate can triple, but the income can become 16 times more. That's why I realized that the wealthy people, even if it's a small interest, they're very particular. You ask a lot of people, how much is your loan interest? And they memorize it. How much is the interest of your savings? I'm not sure. You gotta make sure what's the rate of return for your money. Because a small interest difference between four and eight could mean four times your income. And then this is something I want to share to you, something I learned from Brother Bo, the wealth, the, 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 the formula for abundance. John, I don't have money to save. Remember, small money, 10,000 can become 40,000. 10,000 can become 640,000. Small money become big. So what happens? Usually what we do is when we have our salary, we put expense into it. Then after expense, we eat out. That's why every payday, the whole restaurant are filled up, right? And then after that, if something is left, we save. And if there's still something left, then we give to God. That's why coins pag minsan, diba? But for me, my personal formula of abundance is that from your salary, give your tithes. Because we're not here without God anyway. But after that, sino nagtrabaho? Tayo, di ba? So the, first, the next person you should pay 
are you supposed to be SM or you're supposed to pay yourself? So then you gotta save. And then after that, pay your expense. Joanne, easier said than done. It's true. But you know what? If you put God first, my personal opinion, the rest will come very easy. You know what? Tell me. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you a secret. If you haven't, if you've been using the old formula and it doesn't work, it doesn't hurt by trying the second formula. But you've got to stick to the formula. It cannot just be based on convenience. You gotta stick that it's the formula, and that formula you're gonna follow. And you will see the effect. God first, but second should be you before expense. So, unahin mo muna yung paying yourself. Usually, you pay yourself 20%. The Lord, we give 10. But we, for us, we give 20. So, we should live at 70%. And the way you should do it is do the first one so that you can budget the 70%. Because if you start with the 70%, you'll end up not having the 30%. Time. The next part. Remember all this. It takes time to grow money. Don't go on a get quick rich scheme. I'm not a believer of that. I believe on something that something good has to take time. Anything instant is not good. Take instant noodle, it's not good. You put in a microwave, it's not good. Anything instant is not that good. It takes time to grow. And you gotta learn how to accept that. But when people say that I cannot become a millionaire, you, you got Mr. Start Early here. He saves 20000 per year, only for six years. With a compounding interest of average about 12%, that would still be about $9 million in about 25 years. So, but if you, you wait longer, you just wait for five years. Let's say I learned something today but let me st start to save five years from now how much did you lose exactly the same amount of money but from nine million it became four small money right twenty thousand give it time it become big money the longer you wait what about this? Can you create a fortune with small money over time, even at 1,000 per month? Well, it's still, if you look at it, do you know that 1,000 per month, after 60 years, it becomes 100 million? Yes, but Joanna might not be here. But what about your kids? Would you think what they would do when you leave them with 100 million? What about, but 1,000 a month? What about 80 years down the line? How much is it? Can you tell the person beside you? One billion. If you leave your family with one billion, you think they can spend about 500,000 and make a revolt for you, make a statue for you? Wow, this is my grandfather who changed our life because someone broke the, the problem. Because someone started to save 1,000 a month. Remember, small money become big over time. Another important thing when you want to understand wealth formula, rate of return. You got to learn how to maximize rate of return and reduce risk. How do you do it? You got to learn how to diversify. Can you say the word diversify? Don't forget that today. Because most people make this mistake. Let me show you an example of diversification. This person, for 25 years, go on something, he put everything at 6%. Guaranteed 6%. Wow, awesome. I'd love to have 6% guarantee for 25 years. But that 100,000 became 429,000. What if that 100,000 you diversify? Five allocation. 20,000 each. 120,000 after 25 years disappeared. Gone. 
Another 20,000 did not earn even one cent. After 25 years, yung 20,000 still remain 20,000. But the other one earned 5%. Did not even earn 6%. It only earned 5%. And the other one earned 10%. And medyo sunerte sa 20%, kumita ng 12%. You diversify your 100,000. Maybe 120,000 was in a mutual fund, 120,000 was in the stock market, another 20,000 in healthcare, another 20,000 in time deposit. But at the end of the day, something lost, something did not grow, something grow. How much is that? 624,000. Is diversification?